If you've got a small amount of trading capital available to you, but you still want to get involved in the options market, I've got the answer for you. I have a simple options trading strategy that I'm going to show you right now that requires very little capital, very little buying power. It's simple to put on in just a click of a button. And the kicker is you can limit your risk to the downside. So with that, let's jump into the video. Okay, so I have the Tastyworks platform open. I have Tesla up on my charts. I have the options chain open, and I wanna dive right into this and show you exactly how you could put on this option strategy that's super, super simple. The name of this option strategy, if you go to this dropdown, is just called a short put vertical. Or in other words, you may have heard people say a short put spread, selling a put spread. You can limit your risk. You can trade big names like Tesla, Google, because you're only taking advantage of a small slice of the price action. And rather than talking about it and kind of making the water muddy, let's just dive right into it. So what we would do is let's, for this example, let's go 45 days out, okay? I'm gonna open this up. We have the options chain open, and now we're going to come up here to the short put vertical in this drop down, and we're just going to click go. And that's going to put the put spread or the put vertical onto the options chain so that we can move it around. And many of you know that I like to target the 30 delta, 20 delta, 15 delta, right in that area for most of my selling premium trades. So what we'll do is we'll move these up, actually down the chain in terms of price, and we're going to go find this 20 delta, and let's actually put the short put on the 20 delta and the long put on the 19 delta. So with a put spread or a put vertical, you're selling one and you're buying another. So we're gonna sell the 540 put and we're gonna buy the 535 put. And what this does for you is it gives you a net credit because the 540 is closer to the money and you're selling it and you're buying a slightly cheaper put further out of the money, that's gonna ultimately leave you with a net credit of 97 cents. So in this scenario, because you're selling this 540 put, that means that if price drops below 540, you could be obligated to buy those shares from someone at 540. And that's the part that scares people. Now, here's the protection side. Anything below 535, you're covered by this put. You actually will make money on this bot put for anything that goes below 535. So you can think of 535 as your max loss. Between 540 and 535, that's the most you can lose. Beyond 530, if the stock goes to 200, you're covered because this long put will gain value all the way to 200. So the max risk on this trade is gonna be $500, the difference between 540 and 535. Now, if I click review and send, you're gonna see the max loss is actually 403, and that's because we collected that $97 credit. Now, if you add $97 to the 403 right here, that will equal 500, and that is the difference between the 540 and the 535, $5 per share times 100 shares, $500. So this is a really great strategy because what you can do is essentially, and let me set that up again, is you can essentially pick a direction. You can say, okay, I'm, I think Tesla's gonna go higher, so I'm gonna put on this put spread. And if you're wrong, the worst you can do is lose $500. The best you can do is make $97. So you're trying to turn your 500 into about 600. And you might say, well, that's kind of strange because I don't want to risk 500 to make 100. But this is where I'll flip things on its head. You have to remember that we're dealing with Delta. Delta is calculated mathematically, and the 20 delta basically means that there's a 20% chance that price is going to drop below 540 by July 16th. So if 80% of the time you can catch a winner on this, or if you want, you could even go further out. You could Let's go out to the 15 delta. Let's do 15. Let's do the 515 by 510. You get paid a slightly smaller credit, but now look, 15% of the time, it's gonna go beyond 515 to the downside, meaning you have an 85% chance 
that it's going to stay on your side and expire worthless. So if you can do that and collect these small credits all the time, that can add up over time and you're never going to lose sleep at night because when you put the trade on, you already know what your max loss is. Unlike a naked put, if you sell a naked put and you don't have this protection, you could wake up in the morning and the stock could be at 200 and you're liable for the whole thing. So put spreads are a great way to cap your risk, collect some premium, and trade a very small account because a lot of you don't have large accounts. A lot of us don't. We're not trading million dollar accounts. Some of us only have $1,000 and you can trade a $1,000 account using this strategy. This would be kind of big because it'd be risking half your account, but you still could do it. And if you wanted to, you could get into something like, let's pick out maybe AMD. Let's see if we can find, yeah, so look at AMD. Let's go 45 days out. If you didn't want to risk 500 and you wanted to risk less, you could come in here and look at this. We've got two and a half dollar wide strikes. So you could sell the 75, buy the 7250, and when you do review and send, you're only risking $195 max loss. So there's a clear difference. You can pick and some stocks have dollar wide strikes, so you can risk only $100. Now, the wider your spread is, the higher the probability that you're going to win on the trade. If we go back to Tesla for a quick second and we come back here, if you have a slightly larger account and you wanna go bigger than 500, you could then push this to 505 and have a $10 wide spread. Now, look at the probability of profit over here. That's what pop means right here, 80% if we're $10 wide. If I tuck that up to 510, see how that dropped? There's a slightly smaller chance of a probability of profit with a tighter spread. Look what happens when I go from 515 to 455 by 515. Look how the pop went up. So the wider your spreads, the higher the probability of profit. The tighter the spreads, the lower the probability of profit and the less that you're risking. So you get to kind of pick how much do I ultimately want to lose if I have a max loss trade. You can set it up, you know your risk going in, that way you don't lose sleep at night and you can continue to put these on a consistent basis without being super stressed and also trading in a smaller account. And the one gotcha of put spreads that I will explain to you real quick before we close out this video is that once you put a spread on, one thing I learned the hard way was that typically if you put on a put spread, you're probably not gonna be able to roll it. It just doesn't work when you buy back the spread to close it. A lot of times opening the next spread further out in time, you can't do it for a net credit. A lot of times it will be for a debit. So if you're okay paying to roll it forward so that you can give the trade more time, then you could pay to do that and continue to keep the dream alive. But if you don't like to pay to roll, which is what I don't like to do, I only like to sell premium. If I have to pay to roll, then I'm either gonna take the max loss or just close the trade a little early. But either way, you're, you're in control of the trade, you've got your loss controlled, and you can move on to your next trade. And in addition to not being able to roll these spreads, one thing you have to be careful of is you wanna make sure that you close these out before expiration. Even if it's the final day, even if it's expiration day, you wanna close these out. One thing that can happen to you, and I've seen stories floating around on the internet, is that you get breached. It looks like things are gonna be fine, and then after expiration, there's a 90 minute open window where you can't trade options but people can still exercise and you end up getting put the shares say at you know 510 and your 505 put that you bought the protection actually expires on friday so now it's gone and then monday morning you wake up to a stock that gapped down to 475 and your your protection's not there because it expired on friday as well so you want to make sure to close these out before they expire just because you don't want to get hung up in a situation where you lose your protection and, and end up being responsible for a big downside move i hope this video was helpful if you have comments please drop them below. If you're new to the channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. Hit the thumbs up button if you got any value out of this video. And if you want to support the channel, sign up for a Tastyworks account. There's a link in the description and we'll see you in the next video.